In this video, we're out and about in the Triumph Stag, a beautiful day in April. We are heading over towards Wimborne to see some beautiful bluebells, and what better reason than to get out and about in the Triumph Stag and have a bit of fun. Now, some of you may be wondering why we've got the roof up. Well, if you look behind us, you can see there is a third person in the car. This is Downpipe Duke, and we don't want him jumping out the car, so that's why we're doing that. Harry the Stag. So we just thought we'd get out here, enjoy the car, give you a real good feel for what it's like in a beautiful spring day driving the Triumph Stag. It's our car, we bought it a couple of years ago from a auctioneer's, uh, had a few problems with the gearbox, which blew, but other than that, we are now out and about having a great time in the car. So this very attractive 2 Plus 2 Touring V8 engine Triumph Stag was first launched in June 1970 with a launch in the US in July 1971. In all, 25,939 cars were made and they developed a maximum power of 146 brake horsepower at 5,700 RPM with a torque of 167 pounds per foot at 3,500. Price new in 1974 was 3,599 pounds with a 0 to 60 of anything up to 10.4 seconds with a top speed of 118 miles per hour. To Wimborne now in Dorset, um, on our way to Pamp Hill to see some bluebells all being well. And uh, you might just be able to hear the, the V8 burble up against those narrow street walls. Watch out for the Sainsbury wagon. <laughs> High Street Wimborne look. That's the Wimborne Minster and listen to that V8. <laughs> and the fun of driving a Triumph Stag, I did a feature on our Saturday Sockets email uh, a few weeks ago where I was talking about how these cars get every one of your senses it seems, you know, it's not just the, uh, the joy of driving these cars, it's the, it's the feeling of vinyl dashboard of the steering wheel, of the metal spokes of the steering wheel, it's about the smell of the interior and I'm not being rude about downpipe tube or the missus it's all about faint whiff of fuel and oil and whatever it's just something you don't get in a modern day car um, obviously to, to look at the car seeing the car is an iconic experience um, designed by Michelotti uh, way back in the 60s this car is just to die for it looks stunning nothing like it on the road these days at all all that chrome and everything else um, just amazing, really is just amazing. The sound of the verbal, as we said, is, is enormous. Uh, the smell, the taste, I suppose, the taste of the 70s. And here we are at Pamp Hill, beautiful tree-lined road. And not too far away, we're gonna see an awesome sight very shortly. It only comes out once a year, but it's well worth a trip if you're ever over this way. And we have arrived. Now this particular car started life as an Inca yellow rendition according to the commission plate and was a February 1978 car um, with a chassis number that was actually quite late. It was only about a thousand uh, cars before the last Stag uh, ever made was made. So uh, a very late car, uh, technically should have a Borg Warner 65 gearbox in it but only has a 35 since our blow up on the way back from the auctions. And here we are, look at this. A sea of blue, blue bells in the woods. Look at that love over there. It is lovely, isn't it? You want a disaster, didn't you? You better not. It's fine. Were you just taking the? out and about enjoying picnics and as I was saying earlier just the joy of driving these cars is just immense people wave at you there was a guy yesterday I was out and about driving through Wimborne actually and he just stopped in his tracks and just watched us as we went by I gave him a wave so hopefully made him made his day but he was obviously impressed with the stag as many people are that's Pamp 
Hill Monastery. We never did that, did we? No. One for next time, maybe? This car is at home down country lanes. It's not such a big fan of motorways, although it will do 70 or 80 miles an hour, where you're allowed to, of course. Um, but uh, 60 is probably a good cruising speed with this thing. It's got the Borg Warner 35 box on this one, so we've got three Ford gears and uh, kick down seems to work quite well. So when you put it down, it uh, it does take off. Got a direct feel. And for those that watched the film the other week of us with our 2500S or 2500S or 2.5S or Triumph Saloon, whatever floats your boat, then um, you'll have seen we had a bit of a problem with that. So click the link below if you want to see what happened on that journey. That was fun. So far so good this time, apart from the engine not nearly starting just now. Lady Fruit was a bit surprised though, weren't you? Can I go for it? Go for it. And we're off. Hey. Quintessentially English countryside today. Just outside Wimborne, between Wimborne and Lanford. Or as they say down in Dorsetshire, Lanford. On account of all the sheep. But that's another story. Reminds me I didn't bring my wellies. Sunday and a day like this, unless they're all up at Swanage, because I know it's the uh, Swanage Carnival today. Our neighbour was heading over that way today for uh, a car display on the prom. But uh, I have another appointment this afternoon, so um, good to get the car out this morning. Give Downpipe Duke a, a bit of a walk, he's looking suitably refreshed in the back there. As we've said before, on the road, the car really does come into its own with that unique V8 burble, I would call it, and uh, comfortable ride and, and very good handling. It's quite a heavy car, but with a relatively under-stressed engine. So the performance isn't exceptional, but it's a great cruising car all around, and I love it. You want to see us out and about once more where we went out and got some fish and chips in the stag a trip to the seaside click the link below and watch that video